thrombosis.tv coverage of the 2015 ISTH conference here in Toronto. Thomas Baldrick along with Dr. James Duquettis from McMaster University in Hamilton. Thank you, sir, for coming by. It's my pleasure. Let's talk about the uh, data you've presented here. What can you tell us about what you've done and what the results show? These data were taken from the RELY trial, the large randomized trial that compared uh, stroke prevention in patients with uh, atrial fibrillation between dabigatran and warfarin. And this involved over 18,000 patients. And among those 18,000 patients, quite a number of them required surgery or some procedure. We wanted to focus on those patients who required an urgent surgery and procedure because this is an area where clinicians are very concerned about how do we, how do we best manage uh, these patients, especially until recently when there was no antidote available and they required a situation that may predispose them to bleeding. So we studied patients who required interruption of their anticoagulation for a procedure and surgery and separated them into two groups. Those that needed an elective surgery and those that needed an urgent surgery and procedure. And not surprisingly, we found that those who needed an urgent procedure or surgery had about a seven-fold higher risk for major bleeding in the perioperative period, period, which we defined as from the time of surgery until about 30 days afterwards. But what was note noteworthy was that even though rates of bleeding, and this was major bleeding, were quite high among those patients requiring an urgent surgery or procedure, by that I mean between 15 and 20 percent, the rates of bleeding were not significantly different whether a patient was treated with warfarin or whether they were treated uh, with dabigatran. And that, I think, provides some reassurance uh, to clinicians uh, that patients who are receiving the novel agents like the Bigatran can be managed in the uh, setting of urgent surgery and their outcomes are not any worse than if they had been on warfarin. And moreover, rates of perioperative thromboembolism, stroke, uh, type of thing was actually the same across the, the groups whether they received uh, the bigotran uh, or not. The question obviously now is what do we do with these data? How does this help us in our everyday practice? Well I think the next step is that we said there, there are rates of major bleeding of between 15 to 20 percent if somebody is on an anticoagulant and needs an urgent surgery or procedure. You know, an example might be somebody coming in with a hip fracture or somebody coming in with trauma after a, a motor vehicle accident. Can we do anything to mitigate their risk for bleeding which we know bleeding also predicts adverse cardiovascular events. And certainly we have uh, blood products now, uh, prothrombin complex concentrates. And I think the most exciting uh, development which was presented uh, yesterday at the meeting is the uh, presence of an antidote to the Bigatran, uh, Adarucizumab, and hopefully that will become available for clinical use in very specific situations. So one of the situations, of course, is patients who have serious bleeding. The other situation is the situation that our research pertains to, a patient that is not bleeding but will require an urgent surgery or procedure which of course will incur an, an increased risk for bleeding. So we're really excited about uh, the, the new options to manage patients uh, who require urgent surgery of procedures. We estimate that the urgent surgeries encompass about one to two percent of patients per year on an anticoagulant and of course for elective surgeries it's more but this is not uh, a trivial number of patients so right. hopefully uh, these advances will help reduce the risks for bleeding and other adverse outcomes in these patients. You showed the bleeding rate was not different between warfarin and dabigatran. Why do you think this is so important for physicians to recognize that piece of data that you've got? I think it's of paramount importance because of the uncertainty factor that clinicians have had for a number of years on, for, with regard to dealing with bleeding, reversing bleeding with the novel agents and in particular with the Bigotran because it was the first novel agent to enter into clinical practice. And I think the, the paradigm, the mindset needs to change that, you know, these are, yes, they are 
blood thinners, anticoagulants, and there is a risk. But you know what? That risk isn't really that much higher, uh, whether they're on a novel agent like the Bigotran or, or Warfarin. And these patients can be managed uh, so that we can mitigate their risk for uh, further bleeding complications, in this case around the perioperative area, with uh, reversal agents like blood products and with antidotes. So I think this is uh, this really needs to provide reassurance to clinicians uh, and to um, the the availability of the new uh, antidote and blood product treatment that you've got an advantage now. You've got a therapy you know in your in your arsenal that uh, you can use specifically targeted to a novel agents in this case the bigotran. Let's ask if you have a recommendation. Based on what this data shows you, what recommendation or recommendations would you make? The first thing is that we know that these are very high-risk patients. Uh, as the data show, their rates of major bleeding, uh, if they require an urgent surgery and they're on an anticoagulant, rates of major bleeding are 15 to 20 percent. This is about seven to eight-fold higher than rates of major bleeding in patients having an elective surgery. So my recommendation is that we need to try to use the resources we have to mitigate that risk for bleeding, uh, whether it's blood products uh, or antidotes. Use them selectively, obviously, uh, because you know, we have this opportunity now to reduce that risk uh, for bleeding. And as we do that, maybe we can also reduce risk for other complications MI, uh, stroke, thromboembolism that we know accrue as a result of the bleeding episode. Which of these questions will you try to tackle next? The next question, I think, is to look more carefully to expand on the available data that we have among patients who are on novel oral anticoagulants and need an urgent surgery and procedure. You know, how can we mitigate uh, the risk for adverse outcomes? Uh, how well do uh, blood products, how well does the, do the antidotes work to uh, mitigate that risk? Uh, because certainly there, there still is a concern. These are blood thinners. And although they do a lot of good, and often you know, from a physician's perspective, it's hard to convince them because we don't see the strokes and the disability we prevent. We sometimes just see the bleeds and we need to focus on the things that we are preventing. Having said that, bleeding we know will occur. Uh, we need to be able to better manage that and further reduce patients' risks of all uh, adverse outcomes, both stroke-related and bleeding-related. Dr. Kettis, thank you. We appreciate your time. Congratulations on your efforts and your findings. Thank you very much. My pleasure.